Cut. Big cut. Look at our rules of combat based on three five-minute rounds and, of course, five five-minute rounds for championship bouts. And, of course, in the amateur division, that changed to three three-minute rounds and, of course, five three-minute rounds for championship bouts in the amateur division. It's based on the 10-point must system, judging criteria, and to get things started, we'll go ahead and throw it to the cage. Ladies and gentlemen, from the sensational Silver Legacy Resort Casino, Reno, Nevada, King of the Cage, General Tire, and Tequila Comisario present this three-round bout in the Women's Bantamweight Division. After the bell rings, your referee in charge of the action, Joe Sullivan. Introducing first, fighting out of our Lucas Oil Blue Corner, standing five feet, 10 inches tall, official weight, 147 point two pounds. She represents the West Coast Brawlers. Ladies and gentlemen, from sunny San Diego, California, presenting Diane Rose Sablon. Her opponent across the cage, fighting out of our general tire red corner, stands at five feet, three inches tall. Official weight, 144.4 pounds. She represents combat, sport, and fitness. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, from Reno, Nevada, presenting Wendy Bonesaw Freeman. Once again, Joe Sullivan is your official for this bout. Now with the final instructions, three rounds, women's bantamweights. Ladies, you've been over the rules. Protect yourself at all times. Obey my commands at all times. If I tell you to stop, you must stop. Touch gloves if you want. Go back to court. Be ready. And welcome to King of the Cage, Future Legends 46 here at the Silver Legacy Resort and Casino in Reno, Nevada. We're gonna get things started with Diane Rose Sablon versus Wendy Freeman. Kicking off round number one here, the 145 pound division. Three rounds, three minutes apiece. And Sablon going in hard here. Freeman defending, putting her up against the cage now. Sablon still managing to get some strikes in. Freeman continuing to just hold on to that single leg and gets the takedown. Freeman now going to try and take advantage of this situation here. Sablon now going to have to test out her ground game. And Freeman now working to take the back, trying to get those hooks in here. She goes a little far, but it's working out so far. And now trying to settle in for that rear naked choke. Sablon defending, controlling those hands. Now elevating her hips. Trying to get some leverage here against Freeman. Freeman. 
And Sublime managing to twist around. Freeman, though, ending up on top. And now Freeman getting a chance to throw down some strikes. Sublime trying to defend here. Again, just trying to control these, the wrist and the hands, both these fighters going back and forth. Freeman now laying down some strikes here. Sublime having a hard time defending, and the ref calls it. That's it. Wendy Freeman takes the win by strikes. And we'll take a closer look at the replay here. What a great way to start off the event here tonight. Uh, Diane Rose Sublime coming in very aggressive right off the bat in the beginning, um, initiating those strikes. Freeman uh, seemed to have a plan to get things down to the ground since the beginning, was holding onto that leg for quite some time and was able to find that outlet to take her down. And when she got her down, you know, she was honestly in control for the majority of the time. Uh, Sublime was trying to defend, trying to control the wrists, trying to not, you know, take damage. However, uh, Freeman was able to break around through that defense, uh, switching back and forth. Ladies and gentlemen, referee in charge, Joe Sullivan has seen enough, steps in, calls a halt to this bout due to strikes. The official time, two minutes and one second of round number one. The winner by TKO, Wendy Bonesaw Freeman. Here is Martin El Metrix Velez. And for our second bout of the evening, Martin Velez makes his way to the cage side. Velez hails from Ontario, California, and stands at 5 feet 9 inches tall. He's currently wielding a 73-inch reach, fighting out of the 155-pound weight class. Now, of course, as uh, is Future Legends tradition, these are all amateur bouts here tonight. Got a couple of uh, championship title bouts coming up at the end, so stay tuned. Velez coming in with an amateur record of two wins and two losses, looking to pick up his third win here tonight. He's currently bringing a white belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu to the table, and he trains out of Reaper MMA and Sequence Jiu-Jitsu. Uh, his Jiu-Jitsu career just getting started now, but he's training out of a fantastic cap, Sequence Jiu-Jitsu, out of Norco, California. Velez also has a wrestling background, so he is familiar with the ground game, although I think he's a little more comfortable in the stand-up. I think he's going to want to try and box out a little bit against his opponent just to try to test out the waters, and if it's working for him, I think he's going to stick to it. And Martin Velez heads inside the cage. Here is Adrian Chambers. And the opponent making his way to the cage side, Adrian Chambers. Chambers hails from Reno, Nevada, and stands at six feet tall. He's wielding a 77-inch reach, currently fighting out of the 155-pound weight class. His amateur MMA record is totaling out to one win and zero losses. He's looking to pick up his second win here tonight and keep that streak going. Now, he's got a little bit less experience than his opponent in the cage. However, you know, he has done so well so far. He's also bringing a purple belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu to the table. So we'll see how that competes with the likes of Velez. So now, you know, knowing that he has a purple belt, this, this bout may very well get down, take it down to the ground very quickly, uh, maybe off the bat. Uh, Chambers, you know, he does have some stand-up as well, so he may just kind of want to box around a little bit. But for the most part, I think he's going to be looking for that takedown as quickly as he can. Try to take advantage of that situation. And now the referee finishing up his final inspections. And Adrian Chambers approaches the cage.
Ladies and gentlemen, from the Sober Legacy Resort Casino, Reno, Nevada, King of the Cage, General Tire, and Tequila Comisario present this three-round bout in the lightweight division. After the bell rings, your referee in charge of the action, Joe Sullivan. Introducing first, fighting out of our Lucas Oil Blue Corner, standing five feet nine inches tall, Official weight, 158.2 pounds. He represents Reaper MMA and Sequence Jiu-Jitsu. Ladies and gentlemen from Ontario, California, presenting Martin El Matrix Velez. His opponent across the cage, fighting out of our general tire, red corner, stands at six feet tall. Official weight, 153.6 pounds. He represents Atos Jiu-Jitsu. Ladies and gentlemen from Reno, Nevada, presenting Adrian Chambers. Once again, Joe Sullivan is your official for this bout now with the final instructions, three rounds, lightweights. Gentlemen, we bend over the rules. Protect yourself at all times. Obey my commands at all times. If I tell you to stop, you must stop. Touch those if you want. Go back to your corner if you're ready to fight. And welcome to round one here. Adrian Chambers versus Martin Velez. And they're gonna get things started, Chambers. Looking to lay some early kicks. Chambers uh, taking the aggressive side here, starting things off. Velez taking a more defensive approach, taking his time. Chambers does definitely seem to have a little bit of the reach advantage here, and those kicks are definitely helping. Velez just staying right out of damage range. Waiting for that opportunity to open up. And there it is, finds it. There it is, makes a nice connection of strikes there. Finishes off with that knee. Just over two minutes left, they got plenty of time here. And now Chambers going in for the shoot. Gets the double leg, takes him down, but not quite, it's not gonna stick. Chambers now taking the back. Looking to get another takedown here, and manages to get it. And now trying to slide in the hooks, taking the back. Velez in a little bit of trouble here. But both fighters remaining very calm, reserving their stamina. Chambers has the leg locked up around the waist of Velez in an ideal position here to just dish out damage and be, you know, relatively just irritating to the other fighter. It's a very bad position to be in, you know. It's just, you know, to have someone on your back the entire time and he's locked in there, it's very hard to get out of there. If you can manage to twist, but that body lock looks pretty tight. Chambers managing to get some strikes in there. You know, it's nothing significant, not a lot of damage getting thrown, but, you know, just enough to try to throw him off guard so that he could set up this rear naked choke right here. And Chambers laying down some strikes once again. 40 seconds left, round number one. Velez still struggling to get out of this. Chambers just remaining calm and he knows he's in a good position here, throwing some shots to the back here. 20 seconds left, round number one. Continuing to throw those body shots. Chambers doing a great job. Final 10 seconds now. It looks like we will be seeing a round number two. However, Velez definitely going to have to pick things up and dish out a little more damage in the upcoming round. And that's it. And let's take a closer look here at the replay. 
Chambers doing a fantastic job this round, just dominating. Uh, right there off the back, though, Velez was able to get some a nice little flurry, flurry of strikes that I think shook up Chambers, and uh, I think that's what you know clicked in Chambers' mind, said, I need to take this down to the ground. This is where I'm going to do the best. He did not want to stand in box with Velez. As I was saying before, uh, during the walkout, Velez definitely going to favor that boxing style, going to want to sit in the stand-up, and it is working for him. However, once he got slammed down, taken down to the ground, Chambers was all over it. Chambers was able to lock in that figure four, body lock, keep things taken care of, was able to dish out some strikes and damage as well. We'll have to see how it continues coming up after the break. And welcome back from the break. Here we are at round number two. Once again, Adrian Chambers versus Martin Velez. Chambers coming off of a very strong first round, definitely earning him some points in the eyes of the judges if this ends up going the distance. Velez, though, very tough fighter, very calm, patient fighter. He's going to wait for that opportunity to open up. He doesn't look very fatigued. It doesn't look like he suffered very much damage from that first round either. Chambers throwing those kicks again, once again. Velez moving in. I think Velez is really going to have to pick up the pace just a little bit here in round number two. Trying to pick up some points, at least get an even round, or try to win it in his favor. I think he knows if he keeps on the stand-up, he could definitely uh, get the dominant position here. But I think Chambers already understands that he wants to take this down to the ground. He's just going to wait for that opportunity to open up. Tries to do it right there, but Velez says no. Velez was able to get off a couple shots as well. And now Chambers pinned up against the cage, taken down. Velez taking things down to the ground now for a change. Chambers trying to defend from this takedown here. Velez trying to make his way in here, scooping up the legs. Now passing over. Minute and 30 seconds left. You guys, lots of time. Chambers doing a pretty good job of defending here. He's got his back up against the cage, staying elevated, not letting Velez really, you know, make any promotion towards a submission. And Velez now, raining down some shots, deals a little bit of damage here, opens him up. Gets Chambers back to the ground now, but Chambers locking up. Forty-five seconds left in round number two. Chambers looking like he was going for a triangle for a second there. Velez not letting it happen. Now trying to open him back up. Chambers trying to remain calm here. Velez remaining in the dominant position though. And now laying down some strikes. Chambers trying to lock up that triangle once again, but slips right out as Velez. Velez was a couple more shots, doing a great job here in the second round. Chambers now just locking him down these last few seconds, and that's it for round number two. Velez doing a fantastic job, did exactly what he needed to do that round. Uh, definitely earned that round in his favor, I believe. He, he really needed that, though, as well, because while I was saying earlier, you know, the first round, Adrian Chambers just completely took and dominated. This round, however, it was, you know, the tables were turned so much. Velez was able to stay in that dominant position. Velez took things down to the ground, was able to stay on top of Chambers for pretty much the entire fight. Uh, was also managed to dish out a couple of shots here and there that did make it through, did a little bit of damage. And we're going to have to see how it all finishes up here in round number three. And they're off. Both fighters are pretty tight up here, so if this ends up going the distance to the judges, you know, this is going to be the proving round. So far, it's pretty, pretty split down the middle. Chambers, I think, dealing just a little bit more damage. But just as I say that, Velez opening up some combos, definitely spicing it up this round.
Velez waiting for that opportunity. Both fighters just fighting for center cage. Both fighters taking the cautious route now. I think they both understand that, you know, whoever gets that initial takedown or whoever gets that nice combo of shots in first may or may not take the round. And there it is. Velez moves in, throws a couple of nice shots. Velez definitely beating out Adrian in the stand-up. Velez just a little cleaner and a little faster with those combos. Just as I say that, though, Chambers lands a nice little shot. Velez now going for the single leg. Lifts him up. Doesn't quite get the clean takedown he's looking for. Chambers doing a good job locking up that arm there. Not letting Velez progress. Velez just moving him over to the cage side. Still got a minute and 10 seconds left in this round. A lot can happen. But if Velez can stay on top and in this dominant position, I think he's in for uh, some good judgment. Chambers now locking up. In an awkward position here now. Spinning him around, Velez. Moving in, Chambers putting up that guard. The referee calling for some work to be made. 40 seconds left in this round. It's going to be a very close call. Thirty seconds left. Martin Velez trying to just stay on top, stay in that dominant position here all the way through to the end. That's definitely going to get him some points. Chambers having a hard time trying to turn this in his favor. He's going to have to make something quick. He's only got 15 seconds left. Velez throwing in some last-minute strikes here, trying to explode in the last few seconds. Whatever points he can rack up as much as he can, and that is it. And I believe Velez is going to take that win, but we're going to have to see what the judges have to say officially. For now, let's take a look at the replay. And you know, this round, Velez did a great job, uh, pretty similar to the second round. I think both fighters were a little more cautious in the beginning of this round as far as the stand-up was concerned, but both fighters did manage to prick off a couple of shots on each other. Uh, Velez, though, initiated the takedown first, tried to get things down to the ground, wanted to go for a nice heavy slam. Chambers did a good job of defending from that. However, from that point, Chambers was on his back for the rest of the fight, and that's definitely going to reflect negatively in the eyes of the judges. Ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds of lightweight action, we go to the judges' scorecards, and all three judges at cage side, A, B, and C score this contest exactly the same way. 29 to 28 for your winner by unanimous decision, Martin Elmetrix Velez. Here is Ruben. El Oso Granados. And our next bout of the evening is going to start off with Ruben Granados now heading to the cage. Granados hails from Bishop, California and stands at 5 feet 7 inches tall. He's currently fighting out of the 185 pound weight class. His amateur MMA record standing at one win, zero losses. He's looking to pick up that second win here tonight and keep that streak going. Now Granados is very skilled in the ground game. He's bringing a purple belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu to the table. He trains out of Eastern Sierra Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. So if I'm going to make any predictions, I'm going to say Granados is going to want to try and take things down to the ground as quickly as possible. I do believe he has a little bit more ground game experience over his opponent. So if he's comfortable there and that's where he wants to be and that may be the easiest way for him to win this fight, then I think he's going to take it. We're just going to have to see, though, we are moving up in the weight classes, so that means if his opponent is much more of a striker, Granados is going to have to be careful and watch out not to get knocked out because uh, there's a lot of power behind these punches. 
as we move up. Granados heads inside the cage. Here is Pablo, Poe the Avenger, Gomez. And his opponent approaching the cage. We have Pablo Gomez. Gomez hails from Reno, Nevada and stands at five feet, 10 and a half inches tall. He's currently wielding a 73 and a half inch reach. He's also fighting out of the 185 pound weight class. Now Gomez is looking to pick up his third win here tonight. He has a current amateur MMA record of two wins and one loss. Now while he was only bringing a white belt in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu to the table, he's primarily a stand up fighter. He's got a lot of power behind those punches, definitely has that knockout potential. And so Granados is gonna have to be careful of that. As I was saying before, you know, it's the classic case of a striker versus a ground guy. It's really gonna come down to whether the striker lands that knockout punch or whether the ground guy gets him down to the ground fast enough. So it's definitely, I think we're in for a very action-packed bout. Gomez, very aggressive stand-up fighter. Granados, very aggressive ground fighter. And the referee finishing up his final inspections here. Gomez does have some wrestling experience from his past, and he trains out of combat, sport, and fitness. So he is bringing a pretty good kit to the table here. We'll see how he does as Pablo Gomez heads inside the cage. Ladies and gentlemen, from the sensational Silver Legacy Resort Casino, Reno, Nevada, King of the Cage, General Tire, along with Tequila Comisario, present this three-round belt in the middleweight division. After the bell rings, your referee in charge of this contest, Jimmy Garino. Introducing first. Fighting out of our Lucas Oil Blue Corner, standing five feet seven inches tall. Official weight, 186 pounds even. He represents Eastern Sierra Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Ladies and gentlemen from Bishop, California, presenting Ruben El Oso Granado. His opponent across the cage, fighting out of our general tire, red corner, stands at 5 feet 11 inches tall. Official weight, 185.2 pounds. He represents combat, sport, and fitness. Ladies and gentlemen, from Reno, Nevada, presenting Pablo Ho the Avenger, Gomez. Once again, Jimmy Garino is your official for this bout. Now with the final instructions, three rounds, middleweights. Gentlemen, we got all the rules in the dressing room. Remember, obey my commands at all times. Touch gloves, come out soon. And here we are, round number one, our third bout of the evening. Ruben Granados versus Pablo Gomez. Once again, three rounds, three minutes apiece in the 185 pound division. And they're off. Granados taking the outer circle. Granados looking for that way in, looking like he's gonna wanna dish out some striking here. Pablo Gomez taking his time, waiting for it. Throws a nice kick to start things off. Granados returns, comes in with some strikes. And now with the takedown, Granados. Now the ground game is definitely where he wants to be. We'll see if he can take advantage of the situation now. He's already passed guard. Gomez now trying to stay tight.
Granados getting some strikes in here, though. Now laying down some heavy strikes. Granados taking the grounded pound approach here. And all that weight now sitting on top of Gomez. Trying to twirl him off over the front. Granados is locked on tight though. Very nimble for a 185 fighter. And now trying to sink in this rear naked choke. He doesn't quite have it in deep, I don't believe. I do believe the chin is tucked in there still. He's kind of hanging at an angle. If he can grasp a more uh, backward point from the back. But now losing his advantage from the back and Gomez looking to deal some damage. Now to make up for lost time. Now Gomez laying down those heavy body shots, putting some damage on that. Now trying to force Granados back down, throw some more strikes, cranking the neck, possibly setting up a guillotine here. But no, getting back out and continuing to just hammer the body. Gomez just continuing to lay down the heat. And with just about 45 seconds left in this round, We'll see if Granados can last all the way to the end. If Gomez keeps this up, you know, he may deal enough damage to get a stoppage. There we go, now opening him up in a perfect position here. Gomez holding down the arm with his leg. Leaving Granados pretty defenseless. And just switching back off to the body and the head. Doing a great job of just making sure those strikes hit every part of the body. And now Gomez trying to sink in the rear naked choke. Once again, though, not at the greatest of angles. Granados making it back up to his feet now. Gomez continuing to lay those body shots down. Those are definitely going to hurt in the morning. And Granados with a big slam here. And that is the end of the round. Wow, very aggressive there right at the very end. I'm sure if they had another two minutes and this was a professional bout, you know, these guys would just be wailing on each other. We may have had a first round stoppage. So far, let's take a look at the replay here. Both fighters being very aggressive and doing a great job this round. Granados really picking it up at the end there. Almost lost that advantage completely when uh, Gomez was able to turn things around and start dishing out damage, but Granados was able to finish off with that nice slam and end up on top in the dominant position. That first round is definitely up for grabs. I do believe Gomez did some significant damage as well with those body shots. But stay tuned, we have round number two coming up. I'm sure the action will continue. And welcome back from the break. Round number two coming up. Once again, Ruben Granados versus Pablo Gomez. Both fighters coming off of a very action-packed first round. We'll see if they keep up the energy. I gotta say though, I think Granados just barely took that first round just for the fact that he was dominating in the beginning. Gomez did take it over for a little while, but Granados did end up in the dominant position by the end. And now Gomez looking to make up for some lost points. A nice kick. Another kick from Gomez. Gomez is trying to make these outside leg kicks, strike whenever he can. He's got a little bit more reach and height advantage over Granados. He's going to try and use that as much as he can. Gomez now going in, locking up the head for a second there, throwing some knees to the belly. Granados putting the pressure up against the cage. Two minutes left in this round. And now Gomez taking the back. Gomez laying out some damage here, throwing some strikes. Definitely starting to tilt this round in his direction. He's got lots of time though. Granados has plenty of time to try to come back. And Gomez dragging him over to the floor. Throwing some more strikes there. Granados does not like those punches. And Gomez continuing to lay down these strikes, doing a great job here. Just dominating this round so far. Just over a minute left in this round. We'll see if Gomez can capitalize.
Gomez now possibly trying to go for the head and arm choke. And he looks like he's in there pretty tight. We got a thumbs up from Granados though. We'll see if there's a tap. And there it is. Granados taps. It looks like he was fine at first, but I mean, that was pretty deep. Gomez probably just cranking it as hard as he could and takes the win. Great performance from Gomez there. Nice finish. Tapping out the purple belt. And we'll take a look at a replay right here. Gomez just laying down strikes, was dominating that round. You know, if that ended up going the distance anyways, I think he would have taken the round definitely. But, uh, you know, Granados definitely started showing some damage from those head strikes. Gomez was putting some power behind that, and then Gomez was able to set up this nice submission here. Ladies and gentlemen, the official time comes at 2 minutes and 17 seconds of round number two. Your winner by tap out submission from a head and arm choke, Pablo Paul the Avenger Gomez. Here is Don. Diggity Murphy. And we're going to kick off our next bout of the evening with Don Murphy making his way to the cage side. Murphy hails from San Diego, California, and stands at 5 feet 8 inches tall. He's currently wielding a 71.5 inch reach. He's currently fighting out of the 160 pound weight class. His amateur MMA record now stands at 4 wins and 7 losses. He's looking to pick up that fifth win here tonight. He's definitely got some experience in the cage. He has had plenty of fights. Doesn't have much of a ground game, however. No uh, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu training very much at all. He does train out of Sand Range Fighting Academy and West Coast Brawlers, however. He does consider himself a freestyle fighter. He's got some good stand-up, some great knockout potential. His opponent is definitely going to have to look out for those fists because uh, I believe Don Murphy is going to be staying on the stand-up for as long as possible and trying to go for that knockout. Or at least the TKO. And Don Murphy heads inside the cage. Here is Ryan Spellman. And his opponent now making his way to the cage side, Ryan Spellman. Spellman hails from Reno, Nevada. Stands at six feet tall. He's wielding a 75 inch reach. His current weight class is 160 pounds. And he's looking to pick up his first amateur win here tonight. Now Spellman is a little bit more of a diversified fighter. Trains out of Reno, Nevada and the Tonkin fight team, as well as the Bunker. He switches off between two techniques of Muay Thai and Jiu Jitsu. So as I was saying before, you know, bringing a little bit more to the table over the uh, brawling freestyle of Don Murphy. But Spellman is going to have to find a home for those strikes, going to have to find the right way to get in here. You know, taking things down to the ground since he has a little more experience may, think, may be the smart thing to do. However, it's all up to Spellman and how he's feeling. You know, because, I mean, if he's vibing with that stand-up and it's working for him, he's going to want to stay there. He's got to be careful for Don Murphy's knockout power as he heads inside the cage. Ladies and gentlemen, from the Silver Legacy Resort Casino, Reno, Nevada, King of the Cage, General Tire, and Tequila Comisario present this three-round bout in the Junior Welterweight Division. After the bell rings, your referee in charge of the action, Jimmy Carino. Introducing first. Fighting out of our Lucas Oil Blue Corner, standing 5 feet 8 inches tall. Official weight, 152.8 pounds. He represents the West Coast Brawlers. Ladies and gentlemen, from San Diego, California, presenting Don Diggity Murphy. He 
today's opponent across the cage, fighting out of our general tire, red corner stands at six feet tall. Official weight, 159.8 pounds. He represents the Tonkin Fight Team. Ladies and gentlemen, from Reno, Nevada, presenting Ryan Spillman. Once again, Jimmy Garino is your official for this bout now with the final instructions, three rounds, junior welterweights. All right, gentlemen, we went over the rules in the dressing room. Obey my commands at all times, touch glove, come out swinging. And here we are, round number one. We're gonna get this bout started. Ryan Spellman versus Don Murphy. And they're off. Spellman opening up with some outside leg kicks here. Murfin gets talked to the ground for a second there. Recovers quickly, back up to his feet, and Spellman now putting some pressure up against the cage. Both fighters throwing some strikes back and forth here. Murfin now putting the pressure on Spellman. Spellman throwing those knees. Murfin trying to find a home for him. And Murfin now coming in with some more strikes. Now dropping down, looking for that takedown there. Spellman defending well, locking up top. Using that height to his advantage. Nice body kick there. Murfin now coming in, clinching up. Both fighters throwing some knees back and forth. Murfin trying to defend, but taking some knees and now taking down to the ground, Spellman on top. Murfin in a bad position here. Two minutes left though, we got, still got plenty of time for him to defend, try to get out of this. And Murphin standing back up to his feet. Looking a little shook up, but not quite. Still got lots of energy. And closing in on Spellman. And once again, going for a takedown. Doesn't quite get it and ends up on his back. Spellman now is turning around. Spellman ends up on top here. In a half guard here. Murfin trying to keep Spellman close. Spellman throwing out some body shots. And just under a minute left in this round. Spellman doing a great job here. Definitely, I think, going to take this round in the eyes of the judges. If this ends up going the distance, however. 45 seconds left. Murfin defending here with his back on the ground. If Spellman can maintain this position, uh, I believe he can definitely score points for that dominance, finish off the round on top. Ideally, that's what he'd want to look for. And Spellman now passing guard and now posturing up for some strikes and just laying him down. Murphy having a hard time defending from this. He's got a little bit of time left, just over 10 seconds. Spellman could possibly end this if he pushes hard. Oh, and now switching up for an arm bar. Is he gonna get it? And it doesn't quite look like it, and that's it for round number one. We will see a second round. Murfin just hanging on there, saved by the bell. And let's take a look at the replay. Fantastic round for Spellman there. Definitely uh, taking the dominant trait. Uh, Murfin doing a great job, though, was actually able to dish out some damage back at Spellman, was able to land a couple of strikes there. But Spellman was just able to tag him a lot more times, was able to you know, land a lot more of those knees to the body. Uh, was able to stay in the dominant position on the ground, was able to pass that guard and just open him up for those last 15 seconds. I believe if he had another minute, you know, Spellman could have possibly taken the win. We're just going to have to see how it develops, though. We'll see if Mervin can make up for lost points coming up in round number two. And we're going to get that started. Yeah, Mervin definitely going to have to pick up the pace here a little bit and make up for lost time. Oh, 
Spellman with a nice kick. Oh, and rocks him. That takes him down. Murphin did not like that. That definitely shook him up. And now Spellman just taking advantage of the situation here. And that's it. The referee calls it. And a beautiful TKO from Spellman. Was able to get that nice straight kick. We'll take a look at the replay here. Spellman was able to open up with that kick there. I think that shook him up. Tried to shake it off, but then that second strike to the chin really just brought him down. And then Spellman was able to just open up here, and I don't think Murphin really had enough in him to really defend and finish this fight. Ladies and gentlemen, referee in charge, Jimmy Garino has seen enough. Steps in, calls a halt to this bout due to strikes. The official time, 17 seconds of round number two. Your winner by TKO, Ryan Spillman. Here is Martin Espinosa. And now making his way to the cage side, Martin Espinosa. Espinosa hails from Desert Hot Springs, California, and stands at 5 feet 8 inches tall. He's currently fighting out of the 230-pound weight class. We are moving up in the weights. This, that means a lot more power behind those punches and a lot more weight being thrown around here. So everything just basically gets boosted up in effectiveness. And he's looking to pick up his second amateur win here tonight and keep his winning streak going. He currently only has one win and zero losses. Looking to pick up some more experience in the cage as well. He currently has a blue belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Trains out of Kihon MMA in Desert Hot Springs, California. Definitely looking to uh, bring that ground game to the table here against his opponent, Sean Carignan. And the referee finishing up his final inspection here as Martin Espinoza heads inside the cage. Here is Sean Carignan. And his opponent, Sean Carignan, now making his way to the cage side. Carignan hails from Roseville, California, and stands at 6 feet 2 inches tall. He's currently wielding a 75 and a half inch reach. He's fighting out of the heavyweight class as well, 230. Team Champ Life in Sacramento is where he trains. Uh, right there we see King of the Cage veteran Thomas Fallon in his corner and his coach. Definitely a huge influence to this fighter, so we may be seeing some really strong stand-up here. Once again, this may end up being a fight between a, a stand-up fighter versus a ground game fighter. However, uh, Martin Espinoza can definitely brawl in the cage as well, so we're gonna have to see how it goes down. I think Sean Carignan is gonna wanna keep things on the stand-up, wanna get, try and box it around as much as he can, try to win by some kind of knockout or secure a TKO. I think Espinosa is going to want to try and take things down by submission and end things that way. We're just going to have to see how it all plays out, though. And the referee now finishing up his final inspection. Sean Carignan now heads inside the cage. Ladies and gentlemen, from the sensational Silver Legacy Resort Casino, Reno, Nevada, King of the Cage and General Tire, along with Tequila Comisario, present this three-round bout in the heavyweight division. After the bell rings, your referee in charge of the action, Joe Sullivan. Introducing first. Fighting out of our Lucas Oil Blue Corner, standing five feet eight inches tall. Official weight, 228.6 pounds. He represents Kihan MMA. Ladies and gentlemen, from Desert Hot Springs, California, presenting Martin Espinoza. Here's opponent across the cage, fighting out of our general tire. Red corner stands at 6'2". Official weight, 
258.6 pounds. He represents Team Champ Life. Ladies and gentlemen, from Roseville, California, presenting Sean Carignan. Once again, Joe Sullivan is your official for this bout now with the final instructions, three rounds, heavyweights. All right, gentlemen, we've been over the rules. Protect yourself at all times, obey my commands at all times. If I tell you to stop, you must stop. Touch gloves if you want, go back to your corner, be ready to fight. And here we are, round number one, our next bout of the evening. Martin Espinoza versus Sean Carignan. And they're going to start things off. Karagnan opening up with some strikes. Espinoza returning. Some nice outside leg kick from Espinoza. Ooh, and a heavy, heavy hook there. Espinoza dishing out the damage. Karagnan seems to be pretty unfazed by it, continues to press forward. Both fighters still retaining a lot of energy here. Dishing out some very heavy strikes, though. A lot of damage being dealt back and forth. Espinoza, I think, leading with a few. And Karagnan eats another one from Espinoza. Karagnan having a hard time boxing it out. Espinoza doing a great job of counter-striking here, just waiting for Karagnan to come in. Espinoza pressing forward now, landing some nice hits. Karagnan definitely feeling that. Shot after shot there. Espinoza maybe ending this quicker than we expect. And Karagnan returning with a nice knee. Now Karagnan looking like he's feeling those punches. Espinoza continuing to press forward. Espinoza. Just hook after hook. And with a nice outside leg kick once again. Just chopping that tree down. Carrick Nahn looks like he's losing some energy behind those hits. And definitely showing a little bit of blood there from the nose. And just over a minute left, Espinoza has plenty of time to dish out more damage. Karagnan manages to land one right in there, but Espinoza counters. Espinoza swinging hard, just misses. Karagnan with a nice knee. Both these guys just have some great durability here. They're just eating punches back and forth. Espinoza really putting his all behind every punch he throws. And 25 seconds left in this round. Karagnan's hanging in there fairly well. Karagnan continuing to press forward. Espinoza backing up but landing those nice strikes. Really drawing with a lot of power here. Karagnan lands one. And round one is over. But they're not calling it, it's still going. That is not a TKO, we will see a round number two. Both these fighters are really just slugging it out. Let's take a look at the replay here. Espinoza especially, I believe Espinoza took that round. Really just dealing damage, being punch after damaging punch over and over again to Karagnan. Uh, Karagnan managing to uh, do pretty good in the clinches, throwing some knees here and there, and uh, just really showing his endurance and staying in the fight, despite getting rocked quite a few times, but Espinoza, I don't know how much energy and stamina he has spent in that first round, however, because he was putting a lot of power behind all of those punches, but just m managing to land heavy hook after heavy hook. And uh, I think, in my opinion, really taking that first round. But, you know, something's telling me that this isn't going to go the distance, and I believe someone's going to be landing a knockout soon. And welcome back from the break. Here we are, round number two. We're going to keep this heavyweight bout going. Espinosa coming off of a fantastic first round there. We'll see if Karagnan can hold on and dish out some more damage. We'll see if he makes it through the entire round, though. That first round, you know, I feel like if that was a professional round and went the full five minutes, it would have been over. 
Once again with those outside leg kicks, Espinoza doing a great job of mixing up his shots. Karagnan coming in. Just barely missing right out of that vital damage range. Oh, but lands a couple of nice ones right there. Karagnan coming back, dishing out some more damage, but Espinoza now defending. You know, and Espinoza really can't underestimate Karagnan, you know, at all, because if he catches him off guard and lands another one of those heavy strikes, that could be it. Oh, knocks him down to the ground, chops down that tree. Those leg kicks really paying off. And now Espinoza gonna getting a chance to uh, flex that ground game here. Karagnan doing a good job defending here, but just as I say that, Espinoza passes guard. And now Karagnan in a significantly worse situation here. If Espinoza can pop up here, try to get some nice shots in, he could control the fight from this point. Espinoza now in an ideal position, laying it down. Karagnan having a hard time defending this here, making his way over to the cage side, but now Espinoza just hammering down. And that is it, the referee calls it. Espinoza takes the win by TKO. And you know, just, just by making prediction from that first round, how high, high fast pace and how much damage was getting shared back and forth, you know, it was pretty obvious. This, this fight was not gonna last too much longer. It had to have ended the second round. I mean, it could have gone either way though. That being said, Espinoza was in the lead the most part of the time, but if Karagnan was able to manage to land more of those flurries in, you know, he could have ended this fight as well. And Espinoza just doing a fantastic job dishing out the strikes. Karagnan trying to hang in there the second round, but once things got taken down to the ground, he uh, just didn't know what to do. And Espinoza got in that ideal position past guard and was able to just rain down fire. Ladies and gentlemen, referee in charge, Joe Sullivan has seen enough, steps in, calls a halt to this bout due to strikes. The official time, one minute and 41 seconds of round number two. Your winner by TKO, Martin Espinoza. Ladies and gentlemen, from the sensational Silver Legacy Resort Casino, Reno, Nevada, King of the Cage, General Tire, and Tequila Comisario present our featured bouts of the evening. Sanctioned by the ISKA, President Corey Schaefer, Nevada State Director, Carlitos Cantone, timekeeper at the bell, Terry Strickland, it's in conjunction with King of the Cage Incorporated, President and Founder, Terry Trubilcock, Jr. Matchmaker Brian McChesney, Promoter Jeff Mahalik. The three judges scoring this bout will be Michael Chavez, Bobby Ozuna, and Jimmy Garino. After the bell rings, you referee in charge of the action, Joe Sullivan. And now for all the fight fans in attendance here in the great state of Nevada and the millions watching around the world. Reno, let's hear it. This is our main event of the evening. Five rounds of MMA for the vacant King of the Cage Amateur Super Junior Flyweight World Championship. Introducing first, fighting out of our Lucas Oil Blue Corner, standing five feet six inches tall. Official weight, 124.6 pounds. This Savage Den MMA fighter has a perfect amateur record. Four bouts, four victories, no defeats. Ladies and gentlemen, from Oroville, California, presenting Charles in Charge Guthrie. His opponent across the cage, fighting out of our general tire, red corner stands at six feet tall. Official weight, 124.6 pounds. This combat sport and fitness fighter 
has an excellent amateur record as well. Five victories, one defeat. Ladies and gentlemen, from far Texas, presenting Wesley, the Slim Reaper, Lancaster. Once again, Joe Sullivan is your official for this bout now with the final instructions. Five rounds of action schedule. Gentlemen, this is the main event. We've been over the rules. Protect yourself at all times. Obey my commands at all times. If I tell you to stop, you must stop. Touch calls if you want. Go back to your corner. Be ready to fight. And here we are, round number one. This is our main event of the night. Charles Guthrie versus Wes Lancaster for the King of the Cage Amateur Super Junior Flyweight World Championship. And Charles Guthrie coming off quick. Lancaster definitely has a significant reach and height advantage here, but Guthrie gonna make use of his swiftness to get in and out quickly. And both fighters bringing it to the table. Lancaster now pushing Guthrie up against the cage. Keeping the pressure here. And once again, because this is a championship fight, this is five rounds at three minutes apiece. Five full rounds for these fighters. Both giving him a chance to really prove who deserves this title. Guthrie throwing some nice shots in to the inner leg. Both fighters just throwing knees back and forth. And it's a stalemate so far. Guthrie just barely getting out of damage range, but eats a nice kick from Lancaster. And Guthrie just looking for a way in. Lancaster maintaining a great defense, though, lands a nice kick there. Guthrie recovers quickly. Lancaster trying to get that hip toss there, but ends up ending up on top anyways with that takedown. Lancaster doing a great job here, staying on top, maintaining this position. Guthrie maintaining his defense, though, and guard. Lancaster not being able to push through it quite yet. And Guthrie's got that foot on the hip. Trying to swing it around. Trying to go high here, possibly looking for a setup for a triangle. And Lancaster just keeping that pressure going, trying to get in there. 40 seconds left in round number one. Both fighters doing a great job here. I think Lancaster gaining some points for staying on top, but not really able to break past Guthrie's guard. Lancaster working that cross face there, trying to irritate Guthrie, get him to loosen up. Lancaster doing a great job here, throwing some strikes down to the body. Guthrie going to have to try and turn things around here. And that's it for round number one. We'll see if Guthrie can change that uh, outcome in the second round up coming up. I have a feeling, uh, especially with these fighters in the 125-pound weight class, most of the time these guys are known for their stamina. They can keep going for a long time. So we definitely have to prepare for the possibility of this going the long haul. However, you know, you never know how it's going to go. All it takes is one lucky strike, one lucky uh, TKO, or properly set up TKO. Shouldn't see lucky at that, but you never know. And both these fighters are very well diverse. You know, they're well versed in the ground game, well versed in the stand up. Could go either way. And welcome back. Here we are, round number two of our main event of the evening. Once again, Charles Guthrie versus Wes Lancaster for the King of the Cage Amateur Super Junior Flyweight World Championship. And we're on round number two of five, if it ends up going the distance. And Guthrie slips there, not giving Lancaster the chance to make an opportunity out of it. And a nice overhand strike there. 
Takes him down to the ground. Lancaster now on his back. Guthrie trying to change things up, make up for last round. Guthrie just continuing to push forward here. And Guthrie remaining on top here. Lancaster just taking his time, trying to remain calm, not spend too much energy. Both fighters kind of at a stalemate here. Still got lots of time though. And Guthrie looking for a way out of this. And there we go, Lancaster sets his guard up. Lancaster doing a good job of shoving Guthrie away, but he manages to land a nice strike there. And Lancaster making use of those heels. Guthrie continuing to keep this pressure going. Lancaster just looking for a way out. Both these fighters just kind of tangled up here. And now Guthrie swinging around to the side. Still has lots of time to make something out of this. Guthrie trying to make his way into side mount here. Looking to pass guard. Lancaster bucking up. And Guthrie cranking the head down. Guthrie ends up on top once again here. Just over 30 seconds left in this round. Guthrie trying to do whatever he can here to secure this round in his favor. I think definitely doing a good job here, staying in the dominant position for the majority of the time. Both these fighters truly an equal match here. And that's 10 seconds left on the clock. Guthrie just continuing to hold this position here. Lancaster locking him down. And that's it for round number two. We'll see how this continues up in the third round. Let's take a look at the replay here really quick. Uh, this round, Guthrie definitely turning things around, landing a couple more strikes, and just ending up in the dominant position for the majority of the round, definitely taking this in his favor, as opposed to the first round, which I'd say went to Lancaster for being in a similar situation. Uh, but we're just gonna have to see how it all develops. Not a whole lot going on in these rounds. I know a lot of stalemating. Uh, both fighters just getting tangled up and kind of caught into each other. They seem to have a pretty equal strength level. And we're gonna kick off round number three. Guthrie throwing some nice heavy kicks in there. Lancaster doing the same. Lancaster making use of those long legs to keep Guthrie at a distance. I think Guthrie trying to make use of that stockiness that he has, you know, throwing that extra power behind those punches, trying to make them worthwhile. But he's throwing a little wild there, and that's how he ends up getting caught up like this. And now Lancaster trying to tie him up here. Guthrie ending up on top. And now once again in a similar situation that we've seen in the last round. Just over two minutes left. They both got plenty of time. Guthrie scooping the head there. Continuing to just try to make his way past this guard here, but Lancaster, you know, being very lanky is just hard. Guthrie just trying to do whatever he can. And, you know, Lancaster, he is on his back. He is in a defensive position here, but, you know, he's not really taking any damage, and Guthrie isn't really making any progression here as far as submissions go. So the... I would imagine in the judges' eyes, you know, they're viewing this as a fairly 
equaled out stalemate. Lancaster doing a great job of defending. Uh, Guthrie managing to keep on top. However, both fighters not being able to progress very much more past that. But now Guthrie turning things around. And now Lancaster ends up on top. And Lancaster now in side position here. Looking for that opportunity to pass. Guthrie trying to defend from it. Keeping that hand on the hip, pushing him away. Forty seconds left in round number three here. And now Lancaster landing a couple of shots there. And you know, when the rounds are this close and the fighters are this similar, you know, it's really gonna come down to just, you know, who landed more punches, who managed to be in the dominant position for a longer time. I think Lancaster, if he keeps this up and for the next uh, 23 seconds, he could end up taking this round. And Lancaster now throwing some body shots here. For the last 10 seconds, Lancaster can just maintain this position on top. I think he can end from a very strong point of view. Shoving that face down, and that's it for round number three. Lancaster doing a good job of trying to keep that in his favor. I believe that round is going to get given to him, so, so far it's two to one. Guthrie really gonna have to pick it up, but he's got two more rounds to do it, so it's very possible. Both fighters still look like they got plenty of energy, lots of stamina left. And there it is, Guthrie, you know, overthrowing with those punches, throwing, putting a lot of power behind him. You know, if they connect, it's fantastic. He's going to deal a lot of damage to Lancaster, but how much energy is he wasting when he misses? And Lancaster ended up on his back for a good chunk of that match, but for the solid last two minutes, Lancaster was able to turn it into his favor and end up on top, trying to control Guthrie's movements and keeping that dominant position. And like I said, we have round number four coming up, and if things end up going the distance, round number five. So both of these fighters are in it for the long run. So just remember to stay tuned. Here we are, round number four. And both of these fighters are going to take it all the way to the end here. We'll see if one of them finishes it in this round, but I highly doubt it. I believe it's more than likely going to end up going the distance. Both of these fighters are just very evenly matched. It's going to be up to, you know, a lucky strike or a lucky submission that ends up finishing up this fight. And Lancaster now throwing some nice knees. Both fighters still on their feet, but not for long now. Guthrie manages to pull that leg and get Lancaster down to the ground, now locking up his guillotine. Guthrie got to take advantage of the situation here because it's just these little key moments that the judges are really going to be looking for when it comes down to this decision. Lancaster taking it down to the ground. Guthrie still pulling hard on that neck, but I don't think he quite has it. And Lancaster just throwing some soft strikes to the body. Lancaster positioned up here. Just under two minutes left. Guthrie on his back, Lancaster on top but his head stuck in this guillotine position. But like I said before, you know, I don't think it's really going anywhere. Guthrie ought to let go and reserve that strength. And there it is, releases the hold. Lancaster now looking to reposition himself. Guthrie has his feet in the right position here, pushed up against the hips. And Guthrie resets back up to his feet. Guthrie gets the takedown here. And now Guthrie on top, Lancaster on his back. Still got over a minute left. Plenty of time for either of these uh, fighters to try to turn the tables on one another. Once again, just what a stalemate between these two fighters. Uh, just seem to be perfectly evenly matched despite you know differences in body composition and height. Lancaster throwing in those punches there. Trying to just do whatever he can. You know, he's not throwing with a lot of power, and that's not particularly the point, you know. He's just trying to try to throw Guthrie off guard, try to keep him occupied, make sure that he's staying busy, trying to work up to something bigger. Once again, body shots just getting thrown. Lancaster just kind of tapping the body. And 
25 seconds left in this round here. Looks like we are definitely going to be seeing a fifth round. It doesn't look like either of these fighters are ready to give up anytime soon. And that's the last 10 seconds here. We'll see if Guthrie can make any improvement. Lancaster looking very calm, not looking bothered at all, and that's it for round number four. Guthrie staying clenched on there. We're gonna have to see. This is gonna be the deciding factor here, round number five. Let's take a look at the replay though first. Uh, once again, just a similar round to the last three rounds we've seen before. Both fighters are gonna duke it up on the stand-up for a little while until someone manages to get the other against the cage and get that takedown. Lancaster was able to get a takedown, and then Guthrie also later on. Uh, I think both fighters spent a similar amount of time uh, in the dominant position, so that round, uh, honestly, is a toss-up for me. And like I said, this is going to be it, round number five. Someone is going to walk away with this title. And here we go. Lancaster coming out with some more energy here. It looks like he has some stamina to spare. He might as well put it all on the table now here. Guthrie throwing hard, he's gonna have to watch out. You know, Guthrie definitely looks like he's a little more tired, has spent a little more energy, but he does have the higher strength as far as punches go. And Lancaster doesn't want to get caught this late in the round with one of those heavy hits. But just like that, they get the toss down to the ground. Guthrie ends up on top. And now Guthrie making use, pushing that face around, trying to do whatever he can to make an uncomfortable situation for Lancaster, try to progress here. He is past the guard. If he could posture up and land some strikes, I think that would be best for Guthrie, considering he does have that power. But instead, switches up, goes for an armbar here. Lancaster's not going to let it happen. He's staying tight, and they're all tangled up. Just over two minutes left in round number five. And both fighters are kind of in a pause here. Once again, a stalemate. Lancaster slowly resting down here in a better position than Guthrie is. And Guthrie is a little opened up here and vulnerable to strikes. And he manages to curl out of it, but Lancaster ends up on top. Guthrie trying to position those legs up high, not managing to set anything in here. Lancaster throwing some more soft body shots. One minute, 30 seconds left in this round. Lancaster continuing to try to maintain this dominant position here, and if he can keep it here till the end of the fight, you know, that's definitely going to be a huge plus to him as far as the judges are concerned. Oh, but an armbar here right at the end. Will he be able to finish it? And it looks like he is fine. Lancaster nods to the judge. And here it is, setting up for this triangle choke. Guthrie trying to secure this. I'm not quite sure if it's very tight, though. It doesn't look like Lancaster is struggling very much. I don't think Guthrie quite has it in there. And Lancaster really making use of that lankiness to just spider around Guthrie. And now both fighters here in an awkward position. Neither is really pressing against the other. Very little time left. 35 seconds left in this round. Someone is going to try and have to finish this. So far, I believe it's a stalemate again. This is really going to be a toss-up. It may end up going to split decision. And once again, they're up against the cage now. Lancaster looking for another takedown before this fight ends. Barely manages to get it, but doesn't quite get to get in that position that he's looking for. But Lancaster looking like he's going to finish this fight on top. Guthrie is on his back, but not letting Lancaster progress. And that is it for this fight. Both of these fighters just going the entire distance, all five rounds. And showing some sportsmanship in the cage here, leaving it all behind. We're going to have to take a look at the replay while the judges discuss what their final decision is going to be. And, you know, what a tough seat for the judges to be into. Both of these fighters just putting their all on it, the full five rounds. They look like they're ready to go for another few rounds too. But not either fighter was just not able to, to quite put that leading advantage over the other. Uh, if we're going to break down the rounds, you know, Lancaster, like I said, I think took round number one. Uh, Guthrie took round number two, Lancaster took round number three, and when it came to round four and five, it was much more of a stalemate between these two fighters. Ladies and gentlemen, before we go to the scorecards, a hand for these two warriors. 
They left it all in the cage this evening in this championship bout. Judge at cage side A scores this contest 48 to 47 in favor of Guthrie. Judge at cage side B, 48 to 47 for Lancaster. And finally, judge at cage side C, 48 to 47 for your winner by split decision. Still undefeated and new king of the cage, amateur, super junior flyweight champion of the world, Charles in charge, Guthrie. Here is Amanda Valdepena. And now making her way to the cage side, Amanda Valdepena. Valdepena hails from Desert Hot Springs, California and stands at five feet three inches tall. She's currently fighting out of the 125 pound weight class, coming off of a pretty strong amateur MMA record of four wins and one loss, looking to pick up her fifth win here tonight and keep that streak going. Definitely has a promising career in MMA. Someone to keep an eye out, looking out for, for the professional division. Val de Pena, currently bringing a blue belt in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu to the table. So definitely has some experience with the ground game. We'll see if she'll be utilizing that tonight in cage. Val de Pena trains out of Quijon MMA in Desert Hot Springs, California, as she heads inside the cage. Here is Kelly McKay. And now the opponent making her way to the cage side, Kelly McKay. McKay hails from Reno, Nevada, standing at five feet, four inches tall. She's currently wielding a reach of 67 inches, fighting out of the 125 pound weight class as well. She also has a pretty strong MMA record, standing at three wins and zero losses in the amateur division. Looking to pick up that fourth win here tonight and to keep her winning streak going. Both these fighters are set up to be a very good matchup, very even matchup. Uh, both of them have similar records. Looking to prove themselves here in the cage tonight. McKay is actually bringing a purple belt in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu to the table, so her ground game may be a little bit stronger uh, than her opponents. We'll see how it uh, comes to her aid. McKay trains out of Tonkin Fight Team in Reno, Nevada. There she primarily trains in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. So she's definitely going to try and take things down to the ground in this fight, I think. And I believe that's where she's going to be able to dominate. But if her opponent, Val de Pena, wants to keep it in the stand-up and brawl it out, she may have a problem achieving that. And once again, King of the Cage would like to thank its sponsors for helping put on this event, including Mav TV, Lucas Oil, General Tire, and Tapatio Meat Snacks. Once again, we're here at King of the Cage, Future Legends 46 at the Silver Legacy Resort and Casino, Reno, Nevada. We've had a night full of action-packed bouts. We're about to get our second to last bout kicked off for the night. And the referee finishing up his final inspection here. And Kelly McKay heads inside the cage. Ladies and gentlemen, from the sensational Silver Legacy Resort Casino, Reno, Nevada, King of the Cage, General Tire, and Tequila Comisario present this special three-round bout in the Women's Junior Flyweight Division. After the bell rings, your referee in charge of the action, Jimmy Guerino. Introducing first, fighting out of our Lucas Oil Blue Corner. Standing five feet three inches tall. Official weight, 128.4 pounds. She represents Kihan MMA. 
Ladies and gentlemen, from Desert Hot Springs, California, presenting Amanda Valdepeña. Her opponent across the cage, fighting out of our general tire, red corner stands at five feet, four inches tall. Official weight, 125 pounds. She represents the Tonkin Fight Team. Ladies and gentlemen, from Reno, Nevada, presenting Kelly McKay. Once again, Jimmy Garino is your official for this bout now with the final instructions. Three rounds, women's junior flyweights. Ladies, we went over the rules in the dressing room. Obey my commands at all times. Touch glove, come out swinging. And here we are, round number one. Amanda Valdepena versus Kelly McKay. And they're off. Three rounds, three minutes apiece. And McKay comes off strong. Trying to end this quickly is McKay. She's coming to brawl. Valdepena getting caught off guard there. I think she was expecting this to start off a little slower. McKay said, nope, let's crank it up right from the beginning. Now Valdepena up against the cage. McKay continuing to put pressure. McKay looking for that takedown possibly. Sitting in this clinch here, throwing the occasional knee. And now McKay trying to get around her. Valdepena de defending well. Oh, and a nice twirling takedown there. McKay almost gets the takedown perfectly. But Valdepena stops herself. McKay keeps pushing forward and gets, now she's ending up on her back here. And now taking the back is McKay. And she's got those hooks in now. And this is a very bad decision for Valdepena. It doesn't look super deep, but it is in there. Valdepena just got to work. Oh no, yeah, that's in there. This could be it, that's it. And by rear naked choke, Kelly McKay takes the win. Let's take a look at the replay. These fighters just do an amazing job. Kelly McKay just coming out there, full aggro. Starts this fight throwing a bunch, a flurry of punches. Kind of throws her off guard, then switches up to, okay, I'm going to get a takedown. I'm going to finish from the ground. Goes ahead and does it. You know, a little rough on the onset, but, you know, doesn't matter because it ended up paying off for her anyways. Got that rear naked choke in there and set it in deep. Ladies and gentlemen, the official time, one minute and 23 seconds of round number one. Your winner by tap out submission from a rear naked choke, Kelly McKay. Here's Alan Super Glue Martinez Wilson. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is our main event of the night. Alan Martinez Wilson now approaching the cage. Yeah, Super Glue hails from Norco, California. He's standing at five feet, seven inches tall with a reach of 70 inches and fighting at the 125 pound weight class. And right there, you can see Johnny Munoz of Sequence Jiu Jitsu there. One of the finest camps in Southern California for Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Uh, Martinez has had an outstanding uh, amateur record so far. Three wins, zero losses. Looking to pick up that fourth win here tonight. Um, he's definitely someone to look out for. He fights very much so like a professional. He's just climbing his way through the amateur career. Young fighter, but you know, fights like he's been doing it for so long. He actually holds a black belt in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. And let me tell you, you know, uh, coming from a black belt from sequence Jiu Jitsu, that's something to be feared. Um, that's definitely not someone you're going to want to roll with because uh, if you try to start a jiu-jitsu fight with somebody from Sequence Jiu-Jitsu, you're probably going to lose. And Martinez is definitely going to be bringing that to the cage side here. He's got some wrestling experience as well. He's definitely going to be going for that early takedown and trying to look for that TKO or submission. And of course, we've seen him plenty of times here at King of the Cage before, always putting on a very action-packed fight and oftentimes very short fights. 
And of course, here at King of the Cage, we've got a lot of fighters coming out of the sequence gym. So we've seen, you know, the extent of their skill and ability inside the cage. Uh, the likes of Johnny Munoz Jr., uh, current champion here in the professional division of King of the Cage. Uh, fighters like Patrick Kelly, Rick James. Uh, you see a lot of these guys coming out here and they put it all on the table. And it's going to be no different with Alan Martinez as he heads inside the cage. Here's Brady, the big beef, O'Keefe. And the challenger approaching the cage side now, Brady O'Keefe. O'Keefe hails from Carson City, Nevada, and stands at 5 feet 8 inches tall. He's wielding a 70 and a half inch reach, fighting out of the 125 pound division. His current amateur MMA record stands at one win and zero losses. He's looking to pick up that second win here tonight. Now, although he is lacking a little bit in the experience in the cage, um, he definitely has proven in his last fight here uh, that he's able to duke it out with tough opponents. You know, he's got a great stand-up, got a good ground game, very diverse opponent. But he's going up against uh, another very tough opponent as well, Alan Martinez, so we're going to have to see how good his stand-up is against that sequence jiu-jitsu. Brady O'Keefe training out of Torres MMA, the Tasmanian Boxing Club of Carson City, Nevada. And we'll see if Brady O'Keefe has what it takes to take out Alan Martinez as he heads inside the cage. Ladies and gentlemen, from the sensational Silver Legacy Resort Casino, Reno, Nevada, King of the Cage, General Tire, and Tequila Commissario present our co-featured bouts of the evening. Sanctioned by the ISKA, President Frank Babcock, Nevada State Director, Carlitos Cantone, Timekeeper, Terry Strickland, is in conjunction with King of the Cage Incorporated, President and Founder. Terry Trebilcock Jr. Matchmaker Brian McChesney, promoter Jeff Mahalik. The three judges scoring this bout will be Michael Chavez, Bobby Ozuna, and Jimmy Garino. After the bell rings, your referee in charge of the action, Joe Sullivan. And now, Reno, put your hands together for our co-feature of the evening. Three rounds of MMA at a catch weight of 130 pounds. Introducing first, fighting out of our Lucas Oil Blue Corner, standing five feet seven inches tall. Official weight, 130 point eight pounds. This sequence jujitsu and MMA fighter has a record of three victories with no defeats. Ladies and gentlemen from Norco, California presenting Alan Super Glue Martinez Wilson. His opponent across the cage, fighting out of our general tire, red corner stands at 5 feet 8 inches tall. Official weight and even 130 pounds. This Torres MMA sport and Tasmanian boxing club combatant has a record of one victory with no defeat. Ladies and gentlemen, from Carson City, Nevada, presenting Brady the Big Beef. Okay. Once again, Joe Sullivan is your official now for the final instructions, three rounds scheduled. All right, gentlemen, this is a co-main event. We bend over the rules. Protect yourself at all times. Obey my commands at all times. If I tell you to stop, you can stop. Touch gloves if you want. Go back to your corner if you're ready to fight. Here we are, round number one. Alan Martinez versus Brady O'Keefe. And the rough. Martinez starting strong. O'Keefe as well, trying to shoot him for a takedown there. 
Both fighters just using their strength to try to pry each other away, just slinging each other around. O'Keefe's got a lot of upper body strength here. Martinez has a lot of that flexibility and agility. O'Keefe ending up on top here. Martinez in an awkward position. Martinez trying to squirm out of this here, trying to take the back. O'Keefe trying to lay down some punches here, get some early damage in. Oh, and an armbar possibly set up by Alan Martinez. Let's go of it. And they're back up to their feet. Martinez opens with a kick. O'Keefe clinching up once more. And O'Keefe getting a nice toss. Now O'Keefe tying up Martinez here, trying to throw down some strikes. Martinez defending well. And O'Keefe going to have to be careful here. Martinez setting up another arm bar. And O'Keefe trying to get this slam. And he gets it. And Martinez is not letting go. Doesn't seem to be phased by it. Oh, and Martinez now setting up this triangle choke. That was very sneaky. There it is, really quick. And this might be it. Has the arm as well. Has a couple of options open to him. And Martinez just pounding away now, opening up for that arm bar. O'Keefe trying to curl out of it, doing a good job of defending. Martinez persistent, going to keep going from different angles, trying to open up that arm. O'Keefe twisting with him, trying to make sure he doesn't get that arm torn off. Martinez just like a snake, working his way around, trying to get... And he's not quite able to set that up. Switching up now in a north-south position here. And Martinez once again coming from the behind. Throwing some strikes down. O'Keefe not defending as well. And they're back up to their feet. Some nice knees from Martinez. And 36 seconds left in this round. Very action-packed. Both fighters spending a lot of energy here. And a nice kick from Martinez. Continuing to throw those knees is Martinez. O'Keefe continuing to hold on, but eats a punch there. And O'Keefe's now onto the ground. Martinez just letting loose. I think he realized that hurt him, but he's got only about 10 seconds left. He's going to have to hurry if he wants to finish. O'Keefe spreads out of it. He runs off, but Martinez continues. Does not give him a second to breathe and starts pounding away. Will he make it? And that's it. The referee calls the fight with one second left on the clock. Talk about not being saved by the bell. O'Keefe not able to make it. The referee sees enough and calls a halt to the fight. Martinez just not giving him a second to breathe. You know, right there, I think uh, that punch that uh, Martinez hit him with really rocked him for a second. And when he tried to run away and buy a few seconds of time to recover, Martinez was already right behind him and said, nope. This is going down right now. If I can finish you off now, I'm going to do it now. And he was able to do it, running it all the way to the end of the clock. But nonetheless, taking the win in the first round. And right here we see O'Keefe was, you know, trying to open him up and was throwing a lot of shots, but wasn't really having them hit, making that good contact that he wanted. Uh, went for that nice slam, was able to execute it pretty well. But, uh, you know, Martinez is a tough guy. That didn't really shake him too much. And he continued to hold on to that arm, continued to stay persistent, and was able to finish the fight. Stay tuned, we will have the final results coming up after the break. Ladies and gentlemen, referee in charge, Joe Sullivan, has seen enough. Steps in, calls a halt to this bout due to strikes. The official time, 2 minutes and 59 seconds of round number one. Your winner by TKO, Alan Superglue, Martinez Wilson.